Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for the new screensavers is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. The new screensavers is brought to you by IT Pro TV. A good IT Pro is always learning, and IT Pro TV is the resource to keep your IT skills up to date with engaging and informative video tutorials for a free seven day trial and 30% off the lifetime of your account. Go to itpro.tv slash NSS. And use the code NSS30. And by Braintree. If you're working on a mobile app and searching for a simple payment solution, check out Braintree. With one simple integration, you can offer your customers every way to pay, period. To learn more and for your first $50,000 in transactions fee-free, go to BraintreePayments.com slash NSS. Get a computer for the price of a double mocha frappuccino. The triumph return of the Gizwiz. Save your privacy with the Dark Tipper and TV's Barton Sargent. Live from the Twit Brick House in beautiful downtown Petaluma, the new screensavers. Hey, here we go. Good to see you, my friend. Good to see you. Tell Our thanks you. to Eddie Dahl from Lafayette, Louisiana. He gave up a, a week's worth of crawfish to be on our show today. Nice job, Eddie. Thank you. Came all the way. Very well Louisiana. done. All the way. We appreciate that. You know, we uh, Took a Tech week TV off the Home Depot. was big in Lafayette because Huge. that was one of the early uh, towns we got, I think, in uh, Louisiana. A lot of fans. Thank yeah. you. Nice to have you back, Eddie. Uh, Marty, nice to have you back. This is such a terrible idea. I, to, to you said on that on the show. internet. Why'd yeah, you say that? Because I don't know. It's, it's been so long since I hosted this show. It's been so long since I follow, followed technology. I'm watching you and the Padre do this show. I think, okay, he's a priest. Is he talking Latin? I don't understand <laughs> what this guy's talking about. No, it's geek talk. You are, you are still a geek, and we still love you. Martin, of course, a regular on the show. We, still, we talked to him last week in the, the, our blast from the past. Uh, you did, we talked about Unscrewed, but you did a bunch of other shows on Revision 3. You did... All canceled. Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> I did Internet Superstar. I did right. Infected. I did Web Drifter. Un here I did This Week in Fun. This Week in Fun with Sarah. Uh, Unscrewed was canceled. What else was there? Yeah, you actually There's don't... a whole series of pilots that never even made it to air. But if you think of it this way, there's nobody who hasn't had a show canceled. I mean, no show goes forever. Letterman... Is like the uh, like the Simpsons. That's the only show that's never been canceled. Tonight Show's never been canceled. Yeah, but they canceled people. I guess so. so I, I think that that's normal in broadcasting. I'm thankful for my ten year run in television. <laughs> no, I mean a lot of people. That's more than most people. Most get. people. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's great to have you. It's great to be here. So we got an All amazing show. It's great. We're, yeah. we're going to have a lot of fun. Uh, we're going to talk to a couple of Kickstarter projects. Erin uh, Thompson's here with her Modulo modular computer kit you saw her cat feeder that would be awesome it's incredible yeah I'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna pledge i'm gonna i'm gonna support this and i'm Me gonna too. buy one of those cat feeders because awesome. the cats wake us up every night awesome and then the folks who do chip are also here chip is an, a, a nine dollar nine dollar personal computer so that's I don't believe it. another kickstarter Giz Wiz himself, Dick D. bartolo will be here he's one got some gadgets face. from the food show and the dark the return of the dark tipper when Kevin was here a couple of weeks ago, we got him. We said, Kevin, we haven't had a dark tip since 2004. I need you to do a dark tip. And he did one. So like the see me side of the internet coming up in just a little bit. The dark tipper. He hated that name. <laughs> he hated it. He hated it as much as I hated the twisted lister. The twisted lister. That yeah, was you. That was me. But that's a good name. I... <laughs> Come on. I'm the twisted lister. No, <laughs> but, but I will name. do. I will do a list a little bit later. Will you? I will. All right, in honor of the retirement of uh, David. Those Letterman. are both Paul Block's names. Twisted Love Lister. Paul Block didn't like the names. He was Mr. Hollywood. Paul watches, I'm sure. Hey, Paul, it's good to see you. Good to see you. 
Come down, visit us. He's up in Oregon uh, now. And, He's uh, doing great. Doing he great. And Gila are doing great, yeah. Uh, so, stories, top stories. And I knew that you would be uh, very interested in this. When I saw it come across the wire, I thought, we got to get uh, Martin Sargent to talk about the adult friend finder breach. That's right up your alley. Yeah. So, uh, Wait, adult what do you friend. Mean? <laughs> <laughs> adult friend. I know about adult friend finder because every time I go on Facebook, it says, beautiful women at Petaluma want to meet you. Adult friend finder. You know that's spam. It's it's it, I. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate that. Anytime. Nice, very friend. <laughs> there she is. There she is. That's the site. Dating, hookup, and sex community. So they got they got hacked. They have 63 million members. That, by the way, is enough to just blow my mind. And two of them are women. Right. It's all guys. <laughs> None of the women on that front page are actually no, members. They should know that. They can't spell adult friend finder. So something like six million of their records were uh, hacked. That includes names, addresses, guys, <laughs> phone numbers. Well, you wanted to be found. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> wow. Here they are right here, six million of oh, them. Oh, and hackers are starting to release that information out. The opportunity for blackmail is phenomenal, it's, right? They're going to make a lot of money. But don't, this is what I think happened. It was some, some guy, some girl, uh, uh, got screwed over by their partner, yeah. found that they were on the adult friend finder, knew how to hack and said, I'm going to expose everyone. I'm going to take this site down. Oh, That's man. That's what I think happened. Wow. Well, uh, just a word of warning. I think we just lost half our audience. They're yeah. rushing over to change their... Uh, their uh, you wouldn't, if you used a site like that, you wouldn't use your real name, would you? Or no, would you of course to? not. And they, this is why I use uh, Ashley Madison, actually. Right. This is a <laughs> now, that's, that's, where, uh, that's, uh, uh, that's where beautiful young women go to meet millionaires. Isn't that right? Is that something like that? That's no, that's... no, no, that's no. another one. There is a site there for that. There is that. that. And I don't qualify for that one, believe me. <laughs> well, you're not a beautiful well, young woman? Oh, there's no, Ashley Madison is, is like for extramarital affairs. That's right. Wow. Wow. Just, I'm not really on it. No, I'm just saying, uh, folks, when you do Dictionary stuff on the internet. on the extramarital yeah. When you do stuff on the internet, it, it could get public. It might. All not those Google searches idea. you've done. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Somebody's going to get in there I just one think time. about that, and I got just I chills going out of my <laughs> Hey, speaking of spies, um, you may remember that the, uh, I think it was the 6th District Court overturned the legality of the NSA's collection, uh, mass collection of phone records. Mm -hmm. The NSA had said that uh, Section 215 of the Patriot Act allowed that. Uh, then the House uh, uh, of Representatives voted for the USA Freedom Act, which said, stop it, knock it off. Senate, just last night in a late session, decided not to vote. They, they, the cloture rule, which is, means you have to get 60, 60 votes, they only got 57, so they are not going to vote on it, basically killing the bill. Right. Thank you. Make, you might, might want to write a note to your U.S. Senator. I think part of the problem, is, by the way, congratulations to Rand Paul, who was filibustering, because the other issue that's coming up is June 1st, the Patriot Act as a whole expires, and the Senate has to renew it. They're gone now for Memorial Day weekend. They will come back for a few hours. June 1st is when it expires. They need to renew it in the final few hours of May 31st, so they're going to come back May 31st for a few hours. Do you think they'll pass that? Uh, of course. Well, they you know, I usually defer to what Mitch McConnell <laughs> has to say. He says we, are, we as a na Republican senator from Kentucky says we as a nation need to be more secure. It's, you know, I'll, I'll give you. Okay, my that opinion. that's true. We may need to be more we secure, want to be but this secure. is not the way to do it. The problem with the Patriot Act, there's no. You cannot demonstrate that all of this mass collection of data, all of this Hasn't spying on us, has had any Nothing. impact. Uh, it's certainly the impact it has had is to is to completely overturn any sense of privacy we have as a, as American citizens. I think it's time to 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 maybe at least change the Patriot Act. My sense is that won't happen, but we'll have to watch. Watch carefully and write your Congress critter. This is the time to let them know Do it. how you feel about privacy and protection. Nobody wants to be the person that uh, not, you know that changed the rules that made it possible for a terrorist attack on our shore. Nobody wants to be Mitch McConnell. Doesn't want to be the guy that goes down in history. Yeah, he allowed an attack. But I don't think that's what we're talking about here. I don't think you can in any way demonstrate that this kind of invasion of privacy, this mass invasion of privacy from the NSA, has made us any safer. I don't think so. So there you go. But it's, a, you know, write to your member of Congress. Let them know how you feel. That's the main thing. Now, you said you have a top. Well, well no, we, didn't, we couldn't do 10. 
We, we couldn't, uh, you know, in, in deference to, uh, of course, Letterman. David Letterman. Yeah. Were you a fan? Of course I was a yeah. fan. It was one of the reasons I, I, I wanted too. to be a late night host. Me too. Carson, of course, Letterman, of course, Alan Havey was a huge. Who? Alan Havey, night after night with Alan Havey. It was one of Comedy Central's first shows. It was terrific. <laughs> Havey's a great stand-up. I must have missed that one. You must have. <laughs> I think. But, but Letterman was very, uh, very much influenced by Letterman. Yeah. His, his mannerisms, his sense of humor, his snark, the way he kind of took down the celebrity culture of The Tonight Show and, and, and made it kind of uh, more human and funny. Well, that it. whole top ten list, that, that was a luck. They were doing that to make fun of top ten lists. It right. wasn't supposed to be a franchise bit. It became one. It became one, though. He had a great one on Wednesday night, his final top ten, brought in ten of his friends uh, to say, I mean, to say goodbye today. But, you know, so we're going to do our own tribute. Yeah, we're not going to call it a list. We, we'll, we'll call it a top five a, list. Mostly because we'll we don't it. have the horse But uh, there, there's another, there's, there, there's an agenda to my wanting to do this, and that is to establish why I should not be here hosting the show. <laughs> Why I'm not going to be able to answer any of the questions oh, well or okay. appropriately. Uh -huh. I want to talk about how much technology has changed since the last time I hosted a show similar to the one that we're doing right now All with right. you. That's well, more than 10 years, 12 years. Since 2003 was the last wow. time you and I stood up here and did this. Is that long? Since 2003. Holy so cow. what do you expect from me, people? <laughs> I, I haven't been paying attention to this tech stuff. I don't know what I'm talking about. Well, give me an example. <laughs> okay, let's. So, social networking barely existed back then. Right. There was there Friendster even. Friendster was the big one. Yeah. MySpace was just starting up. Friendster was the top one. Google offered them thirty million dollars for Friendster that year. Thirty million. Oh. That was huge back then. Oh yeah. Thirty million. That was oh, unheard of. Today like, it's nothing. I had Jonathan Abrams on on screen. So why did you take the money and run? Yeah. Man, what did he crazy? say? He said, well, I can't talk about that right now. I said, I, I would sell Unscrewed for $30. <laughs> Get out of here. But Facebook now is worth $226 billion. $30 million, you can't even get a, wow. a, 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 a six-pack of chicken nuggets in Silicon Valley, That's no, true. let alone a site. That's true. That's how much a social network is Look at that. You could be friends changed. with Punky Brewster. Let's right. talk. Really? Oh, wow. maybe they should bring that 19 back. 19 plus million profiles. Gaming. Since in 2003, Nintendo State of the Art, you know what it was? The GameCube. Really? That's how far back it was since I hosted. What? Microsoft had the first generation Xbox. Sony had the PS2. PS3 and Wii were still three years off. Wow. Farmville was still six years off. Farmville didn't exist? Nope. Call of what Duty Black Ops. What did we Black do with Ops, our spare time? Still seven years off. My finally getting over a crush on Princess Peach was still 10 years <laughs> off. You're over that now. Though. I am over that. <laughs> Congratulations. The internet. How much has the internet changed? Flickr was still a year off. YouTube and Google Maps were still two years off. Wow. Twitter was three years. Tumblr, four years. Bing was five years. Netflix online was six years. Instagram, seven. Google Plus, eight. And on Match.com, I was repeatedly told off. <laughs> PC Power in 2003, a top-of-the-line gaming rig. Yeah. Had about one gig of RAM in an 80 gig hard drive. We built, remember the ultimate gaming ultimate. machine when we began. It was, it, right, right. This is savers. what Call of Duty looked like in 2003. I think we have a clip. That's right actually, there. that's the actual game. That's it right there. Now in 2015. That's finally a Call of Duty I could play. Yeah. In 2015, a top of the line gaming wow. BC has 16 gigabytes of RAM. Mm -hmm. There it is. One frame now, and you, a... you notice the difference. <laughs> yeah, this looks a little bit that's better. That's amazing. Yeah. Of course, I, I shouldn't. <laughs> I, I shouldn't Do talk. Do you play those games? A little bit. In 2003, I looked like this. There he is. Unscrewed. That one. Wait a minute. What's that one with the uh, wrestling thing? Are you wrestling there? I was wrestling women. What show What show is that? That was Unscrewed. You wrestled women in Unscrewed? They, you know, that was one of the closest I've ever come to dying. She put me in a leg lock. That woman in the pink halter top? Yeah. She nearly killed me. Is there any video? I couldn't to... breathe, Leo. <laughs> Apple. <laughs> How much has Apple changed? The How much has Apple changed? Uh, Apple, the iTunes Store, that's what they had back then. It had wow. 200,000 songs. Today there are 25 billion songs on there. Look at that. The iPhone was still four years off. The MacBook Air was still five years off. iPad 7. If you had invested $10 in uh, Apple stock in 2003, today it would be worth $430 billion. <laughs> Is that true or you just made that up? That's my math may be off, but it would be worth <laughs> a lot. 
a lot of money. That's pretty impressive. Anyway, that's how much technology has changed. You have not changed, though. You look exactly the same as when you were wrestling women on tech TV. Thank you. It's the TV makeup. <laughs> I used to steal Patrick Norton's TV makeup. Did you? Did yeah. it give you a 5 o'clock shadow? No, but then one time I saw and him putting it on his head. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't do it after that. All right. Thank you, Marty. The top five list is just is just like the old than days. Ever. Better than ever. We are ready to do a help me. Help me. Help me. Well, yeah, we. I'm beyond it. Help me. There he is, Nick. He's from Duncan, South Carolina. Hey, Nick. How are you? Hey, Leo. How's it going? I am. I am great. How are you? Hi, Nick. I'm doing well. How's it going, Martin? Doing great. Uh, do, you, do you remember television, uh, Martin Sergeant? I do. I do. He's a great guy. Yeah. Uh, I was hear real, that? I was big. <laughs> I was a big fan of the old uh, show and the old network, and I was sad when it went away. Uh, and then a couple of years ago, I was uh, Googling around trying to figure out uh, some podcasts and see what that Leo guy was doing. And long came along, I found Twit. And uh, my only complaint is you've got too many good shows. I don't have enough uh, time to listen to them all. Well, we're so glad that you found us, and it's great to have you on uh, our help segment. What can we – by the way – did you just move in? <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, so uh, we moved into a new house yeah. about a year ago. Yeah. And yeah. This, this one room is the room we haven't done anything to yet. Okay. So we're just still, checking. Still turn turn the camera. <laughs> he's, he's, looks like he's in witness protection. Like he just, he just arrived in Madison, Wisconsin. It could be and, uh, anywhere. It could be literally <laughs> anywhere. What'd yeah, you do, Nick? You can see we still have oh. boxes and whatnot uh, laying around. A year. So. A year. <laughs> yeah. That's the rest not of the house bad. looks great. That's not the bad. I have a garage house. full of boxes <laughs> I haven't unpacked in over a year. So what can we do for you, Nick? Well, so I uh, built a home theater PC, and I use Windows 7 uh, as the operating system. And I've got Cody, known, also known as XBMC, as the media experience. All that works great. Um, my question, though, is, uh, is there anything better uh, that I can do in Windows or maybe something coming down the road uh, that you might know of in Windows 10 that can just improve the general 10-foot experience of just Windows? Oh, you know, the lean like back. Yeah, you know, sometimes I'd like to, to just, you know, open a browser or maybe open another program and just nothing scales great when you're, you know, looking at the just Windows desktop from that far so back. So you're not talking about, because, uh, you know, the lean back experience, you typically think of watching television shows. You're not talking about TV shows. You actually want right. to sit there with a, a keyboard in your lap, a cold one in your hand and uh, and, and, and be computing on the big screen. Absolutely. You know, you know, when I'm not watching TV, if I want to just, you know, minimize the window and just open up a web browser or do whatever else I want to do in Windows, um, it's it's hard to view everything. Uh, that's an interesting question. I mean, I, the problem is you wouldn't have the Windows experience if you put some skin on top of it that gave you a lean back experience. You know, this is this this is. Uh, kind of the fight over Windows uh, Media Center, which Microsoft has discontinued. It's not going to offer with Windows 10. Actually, really barely offered it was Windows 8. Um, if, you, if you get Steam, for instance, and, and you want to play games, they have a lean-back interface in Steam that's great. I mean, it's really it gives you big icons and stuff. But the problem is you want Windows, like the Windows 10 right. experience. And I yeah. don't know of anything. I mean, what, what you're really talking about is the tablet interface, right? Um, <laughs> How do you feel about that Windows 8 tablet interface where you go, you know, you press the start, the Windows key and, you, and it takes over and it's got big icons. Isn't that really what you're what you want? Uh, I haven't used it. I, I'm using an Android tablet myself. Uh, but yeah, I, I haven't used the Metro because I've, I've not m gone into Windows 8 at all. I've just stayed with Windows. Ah, 7. I see. So you haven't um, used Windows 8. Yeah, well, you'll see right, immediately. Right. That's the whole, really the whole reason. And one of the reasons people hated Windows 8 is it, it mushed together two different, basically two different operating systems, a desktop operating system like you're used to with Windows 7 and something for tablets. It had big buttons, tiles. Uh, it was a full screen, right? Every Metro app goes full screen. And, and that is much more suited, not just for a tablet operation, but for a big screen operation. You can, you can really use it. You still need a mouse and keyboard, but uh, even if from 10 feet away, you're gonna be, it's gonna be legible, because that 55-inch screen at 10 feet away is about the size of a 10-inch tablet, right? right so right. Uh, I would say your Windows 8's gonna do it. Now, it's funny because Microsoft with Windows 10 is stepping back a little bit from that. They've kind of, 
more emphasized the Windows desktop. But there is a setting, and you'll find it in the Notification Center, which is in the lower right-hand corner now of Windows 10. There's a setting, Tablet Mode, and you can turn that on. It's, it's the, in theory, if you've got something like a Surface where you detach the keyboard, it will automatically sense now you're in Tablet Mode and move into that tablet interface. But even on a, but on a, on a desktop, with a TV screen, it's not going to know you're doing that. So you'll have to manually say tablet mode. But I think immediately you'll feel at home. You'll use the full screen Metro apps. They're designed for exactly that. Text is a little bit bigger. All the buttons are big, so you can hit them with your meaty finger. Uh, I think it's already built in. That's the closest you're going to get. There is, to my knowledge, no lean back Windows manager on top that you could put on top of Windows that will give you that. But really, Microsoft has addressed that by giving you ta a tablet interface in Windows 8. Well, Windows you 10. could get a Microsoft HoloLens and pretend that Windows <laughs> 10 will do what you want it to do. <laughs> I th do you, have you tried it? I think the HoloLens actually is going to be a very exciting. Uh, could be. Uh, have you uh, actually taken the television out of the box yet, though? I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, the TV? Yeah. I think it'll go right here oh, really sorry. nicely. Yeah. Sorry, right, right on that uh, yeah. one. Yeah. yeah, that's perfect. I feel like in the other room, he's got CIA operatives watching closely to see if he <laughs> gives any, anything away. Uh, I, I, Red dot I think the answer to your question, Nick, is you'll be very, I think you'll be very pleased when you see Windows 8 and then Windows 10 coming, we think, end of July. Because it is really, the tablet interface is exactly what you're talking about. Okay. All right. Great. Hey, thanks. Thanks. Uh, thanks uh, the, he, uh, it's funny that you should ask for that because that's what everybody's yelling at Microsoft for doing. Thanks for joining well, us. Well, that's the one reason I didn't really move to Windows right. 8 because I didn't really want that experience on the desktop. But you do on, on a big TV screen. TV. Yeah, yeah, it really looks yeah. great on a big screen. Hey, thank you, Nick. Okay. I appreciate thanks, it. Nick. Thanks, Nick. If you had asked how to do it in Linux, I could have told he you. He sure all about knows it. his Linux, man. This guy. <laughs> but, uh, is it you like <laughs> XFCE? Is that your preferred? It's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. We're we're not big Unity <laughs> fans here. It's sweet. Oh, <laughs> thanks, Nick. <laughs> hey, we need questions. We need more people in witness protection. If you want to be on this show, listen carefully. Need tech help? The new screensavers are here with answers. Email your tech questions to newscreensavers at twit.tv. And especially because we'll be covering Google. Who's the host uh, next week? Mike Elgin, and we're going to really be covering Google I.O. because, of course, Google I.O. is this Thursday and Friday. We'll be talking a lot about what Google announced and stuff. So if you have questions about that, you can wait till Google I.O. You can watch our live coverage. We're going to start the stream 9.30 Pacific on Thursday. That's uh, 12.30 Eastern time, uh, 1600 UT, 16.30 UTC. If you want to tune in, we will be taking the Google, as we always do, the Google Keynote. It'll be uh, me. Um, Gina Trapani will be joining us, Aaron Newcomb, uh, Ron Richards from All About Android, and we'll be talking about what's going on with the Google I.O. And if you have a question after that, that'd be a good time to email. Again, new screensavers at twit.tv. I'm looking at Karsten Bond. Bundy, but I should look at you. You seem to know. I You're can nodding. pretty much tell you all the answers. <laughs> hey, you know about IT Pro TV? You probably don't. Most of it. <laughs> I put the pro in IP Pro TV. <laughs> you did. These guys are great, actually. Uh, Tim and Don uh, are IT trainers. They, uh, for, for years, were, even in, during the screensavers years, they were doing this. But they were also screensavers fans. They saw what we did with Twit, and they said, you know, somebody should do that for IT, for training. And they created IT Pro TV. And they, let me tell you, they do live. They do actually 50 hmm. hours a week. They have two studios going up to five soon. It's been a huge success. You can watch live. In fact, you can watch live for free, but I want you to get a membership because then all the courses are available to you. Things like A+, CCNA, Security+, Plus, MCA, uh, S MCSA, CISSP, Network Security. They had Sean Philip Oriano in. You probably saw that, the Certified Ethical Hacker Training. Hacker, you would be great at this, Marty. Hacking forensics investigator. I'm you get a little badge. Sign up for this. This you sounds come in, real neat. You, you can say, "Hey, I'm a hacking forensics investigator. Show me your hard drives." Uh, cryptography. I've always wanted to say that. <laughs> <laughs> they now have a search function on the site that will let you find all specific topics, answers to. Uh, test questions specifically on each of the videos so you could search for, I don't know, DNS and it will find everything that mentions DNS in all their courses. You also get the Virtual Machine Sandbox Lab. So even if you don't have a Windows server and Windows clients, you could on any HTML5 browser set it up, configure it, mess it up. It doesn't matter. You just reboot. 
you don't even have to reboot. You just quit out of it and start over. The Measure Up practice exams are included for free. That's worth $79. So you can take the exams, practice exams, before you take the real thing. I can go on and on. This is a great deal. Wow. There's also corporate and group pricing. Clients include Harvard, MIT, UCSD, Stanford. All of this in the last year, they've gone from, I mean, this has been an amazing success story, and I want you to try it. Upgrade your brain with the most popular IT certs, normally $57 a month, 30% off and seven days free if you go to, ready, itpro.tv slash NSS for new screen savers. And uh, then use the code NSS30 to get 30% off when you sign up. itpro.tv slash NSS, and we thank them so much. They're going to do their new intro to security in Net Plus. Don Pezzett and uh, Daniel Lowry will be doing that. Oh. And that's free with the basic account. It's a really great deal. I'll I, see you there. You should, you should do this. Because I think, I think the career in TV, I, maybe I, not like on its way. Maybe something a little... I'll be back. <laughs> what are you doing? Advertising now? Is that what you do? Yeah, now? I'm doing advertising. How's that going? You like that? Yeah, I like TV better. <laughs> <laughs> you come back and do more with us, won't you? Hey, we got the dark tipper in last, a couple of weeks ago, and he gave us, ladies and gentlemen, Kevin Rose with a dark tip. Hey everyone, Kevin Rose here with my app of the day. This one is a little shady. This one is called Burner. Now, Burner is a great app when you're dealing with untrusted third parties. So if you've sold someone something on Craigslist or on eBay, or you're out at the bar and you meet someone, you want to give them your phone number. You don't want to give away your main phone number. Then they can text you, they can call you later down the road. You want a burner number. So a burner allows you to create a fake number and attaches it to your cell phone. So someone can call you at that number and someone can send you text messages at that number. Now granted, it costs a few dollars to create these fake numbers because they have to pay for the numbers to begin with and they expire after a certain amount of time. So that's why they call them burner numbers. So when you're done with that transaction on Craigslist, just click burn, the number goes away, and your real number is safe and private. That is the dark tipper. Nice to see him back on. Look who we have here, Aaron Thompson. Aaron is the inventor of something called Modulo, which is a Kickstarter, right? That's right. You're raising money. How much have you raised so far? We've raised 34000 okay. so far. What's your goal? Well, our, our initial goal was 10000 oh, just to get the project going. So you're funded. We're funded, and now we're trying to raise more to start it as a sustainable company so we can great. develop new products and support our community and, if you and search, continue on with it. If you go to Kickstarter, search for Modulo, is that enough? Yep, You'll be able to find it. There it is right it. there. Yep. And 10 more days, so if you want to get any of these things, and I think you're going to. What's your background? Are you an engineer? Did I'm you... an engineer, so I worked at Pixar for oh. the last uh, 12 years. How many? As an engineer? Or? As, as both an engineer and I worked on the films directly. Fun. So yeah, I worked on Finding Nemo and The Incredible. What'd you do on those? I was a shading technical director, so um, I wrote code that makes the surfaces look like whatever material they're made out of, oh, that's, whether it's that's really cool. wood or concrete. or. So you have steel. a background in software, it sounds like. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But obviously, this is all hardware. Yeah, this is a hardware thing. Um, it has a lot of similarities in a way. I was working on tools for creative people to help them use technology to do creative things. And that's what I'm doing here with, with hardware now. So let's start with the, I, this looks like, so you were at Maker Fair with this, but it wasn't Kitty Chow that you had in there for Maker it was, Fair. It was Kitty with a D instead of Kid T <laughs> with a T. We had, uh, we had a dispensing candy at Maker Fair. So this is the base of everything, right? This, that's right. Well, tell me about this, this unit. So, so this is a modular system. Okay. So you've got a base, and yep. then you've got devices that can slide into it. All right. Um, oh, that's interesting. Well, let me get my fingers out of the way. So you, so you could slide. These are little uh, grooves that you would slide things in. You've yeah, slid that's right. two things in here. There's what is this? Is the display? Yeah, it's a display. It's a color OLED display, and then we have a combination knob, push button, RGB LED. What happens? Should I push the button? You can you can push it. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Let me do that again. That is the awesomest thing ever. Let's do it again. Oh, and, and little kitty chow goes into the bowl. That is fantastic. Now, so cats this, are never going to push that themselves, but... That, that's right, but if you, you know... If you're you, in you bed... Cats being good and, <laughs> so this is a, um, a, a spark core or a particle photon. It's a Wi-Fi development board. Okay. So I have... Um, so that's also modular. That's, part, that's also slid in. Yep, that just, just oh, okay. pops right in there. All right. Yep. 
So I've got an app on my phone here. I'm using the Blink app. It's a it's an app that here, lets you build to this interfaces. Camera. Okay, let me see. Um, there it is. So I'm going to hit this button on the the app. It does the same thing. It does the same thing, and then it I shows could do this you, over the internet. You can do it over the internet. That's right. Oh, that's right. sweet. And you can build this yourself. What is this showing here? So this is showing I've dispensed eight treats. Okay. This uh, application is widely available. Is it at the Apple yeah, this Store? Yeah, this is not our application, but another Kickstarter recently oh, developed this. Makes it really easy to make, make um, interfaces on your phone to control projects with Modulo or with other That's kind of cool, because what it means is there's an ecosystem now. It's not just yeah. you. There's an ecosystem of stuff that can all interoperate. Yeah, one that's of the big cool. things for me, I want to make Modulo work with everything that's right, out there. Right. Whether it's Arduino, Raspberry Pi, BeagleBone, Particle, Blink, you know, all of these different things. And, you know, all these people are creating things, yeah. building the community up, and yeah. I think it's just great, you know. What's nice, and I guess Kickstarter now requires this, is you can't just say, I have an idea. You have to actually have a prototype. Have a prototype. And so yeah, that's what that's we're right. seeing here. Show What else should we look yeah, at? Yeah, so this is just a simple demo that shows how these things slide in and out. Okay. So this just slides like that. Wow. So there's... The Very easy. In fact, device. this reminds me a little bit of um, Little Bits, right? The yeah. idea that you can snap stuff in and out. That's right. Uh, this is so cool. What is this graph showing? That's really neat. So yeah, it's just showing showing some some data being graphed. the output basically of the. And then you can see. I the see position the knob. Of this knob change its. So color. this doesn't do anything, but it gives you an, ex an idea of how these modules can do stuff. Oh, yeah, there's a little right. joystick module. Little joystick, yeah. Oh wow. Do you so when you get when you. Uh, you ship these out. What is the so? What is the? Tell me about the costs on the Kickstarter. So it starts at sixty nine dollars. And what do you get for that? Gets you a basic kit. Okay. Gets you the base and the controller, okay. which you can program in Arduino, or you can connect it to a computer and program it from Python. Okay. Um, so this is the controller. And it gets you a knob here. You and you get one knob. Uh -huh. <laughs> but just and then you can buy more. To get you started, yeah. And then we have. Look, there's Aaron on the. Uh... Dispensing more treats. For <laughs> Spontaneous <laughs> treat dispensing. All right, that's cool. And this is connected to just one of those inexpensive that's phone right. chargers. Yep, just a phone charger. That's where you're battery. getting the battery. Yep. That's great. It's a micro USB connector on the, on the uh, um, Spark board. Yep. I'm sorry. What do they call it now? Photon board. Photon. Yeah, the particle photon. What else you got here? So this is a T robot. Her name is Penelope. I, I love this. Erin has named, not only are, are they are they uh, all female, but you've named them. So this is a... <laughs> okay, you're controlling that. All right, good, good. You've put a little uh, cup of herb, a little bag of herbal tea on there. Yeah. All right. Can I you can, can you see this from the other other side? Because uh, I oh, you, I want you to see the interface too. No, no, no. Keep it oh, just you like, as you okay. had it. We have a camera Sorry, yeah. right, right there. there. It says okay. tea time. So you can change how long you want to steep your tea. Okay. Normally I do it for five minutes, but for purposes of television. For, for, for television. Let's that's let's right. make a very weak cup of tea. Okay. Let's just do All it right. for like seven seconds. It's gonna drop it in. Let me uh, make sure it's lined okay, up. Okay. You gotta line it up with a joystick. <laughs> Okay, and then I'm going to push start. <laughs> Here she comes. Here she, Penelope's dropping the tea bag, and now the counter, and it's done. And it rings the bell when it's done. So oh, you know. and you know your tea's done. Okay, maybe a little bit more complicated than it, than it has to be, but fun. Yeah. Yeah. And it kind of shows you can build a, a cool controller with knobs and a joystick and a display. I love this. You know, these Daisy are really nice. You can it over to your robot with your motor drivers. This is really polished for a prototype. I mean, these look really, really Thank you. good. Yeah. One one really important thing to me was to make something when you put it together, you've got a solid, yeah. nice thing. It's not this it's big not tangle of apart. wires, yeah. it's not gonna fall yeah. apart. Yeah. You know, building things on breadboards and that kind of thing, it's always really fragile. So I wanted to kind of get past that. This is for grilling here. Yeah, that's right. So so, so it's I like Memorial Day weekend. I know you're gonna be firing up yeah. the grill. I like to barbecue. I like to do long, you know, a slow brisket oh, like smoking, or ribs, oh, smoking, yeah. that kind of thing. But that's long time. It, it does, and you gotta stand there and check the temperature. Temperature has to be just, just right. right. Yeah. So I built this. So you got a little um, thermal couple or something. What yeah, is it? Yeah, that's th a thermal couple. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And that goes into a module on the Modulo that is just designed for measuring temperature. Mm -hmm. What else? We got, I love these OLED displays. They're really beautiful. What the it looks like a graph. Is showing a graph there, showing the temperature and the set temperature and the fan speed.
Oh, and you have a little fan. And so a this is fan. what is this doing? This is blowing air into the into the smoker. The idea is you close off everything except yeah. for this fan input. And that's really how you control temperature, right? Yeah. The air... So you turn on the fan, and it gives the charcoal oxygen. Right. And then your temperature starts to heat goes up. up. How well does this work? This looks it really works cool. It works really well. Um, I think on the web page down below, we have a few pictures of some ribs oh. I barbecued. How long <laughs> did you cook them for? Uh, ribs were probably about six hours. I did a brisket oh. that was about 12 hours. Oh, man. This is very cool. And if we turn this knob, it'll change the set point here. So you can. T so what temperature did you do those at? Probably 225. OK, so you, you turn this knob till you get 225. And now this is, it's turned blue because the temperature is below our set point. Ah, so the little I, fan will come on. That's right. Yeah. If oh, I turn yes. it the other way, the fan turns off, and it's red because it's now above our set point. Oh, the knob changes color, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is so cool. I love this. Well, if you go to kickstarter.com and you search for Modulo. Or if you can go to modulo.co. Modulo.co is the yeah. website. And you want to make a business out of this. Yeah, I want to make a business. I want to make lots of other modulos, I love this idea. expand the ecosystem, work with more and more partners to really make it easy for that people is to build electronics. such a great idea. Aaron Thompson, I wish you the best. I think everybody should go to modulo.co, find out about this. It's not too late. You've got 10 days if you want to pledge a little bit more. And what are you have, you have some stretch goals? Yeah, so our, our next stretch goal um, is an IR transceiver. So it can receive signals from an infrared remote control. Yeah. So you can control your project across the room. Oh, neat. Or it can send signals to things that, that receive them. What so is that? So you can turn your TV on and off, <laughs> turn the volume up and down on your AV oh, receiver, fun. stuff like that. So. Go, go, to the, go to the Kickstarter and watch Aaron make tea. <laughs> 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 what fun is that? Thank you, Aaron. Thanks so, nice so much to meet for having you. me on. Thanks for coming by. Everybody, go to uh, modulo.co to find out more. We have more with the new screensavers coming up after this. Sometimes you want to make devices that save mankind. Sometimes you want to make devices that can educate the youth as to how microelectronics work. And sometimes you just want to make a big stabbing robot. I'm here with Tolliver Heath from Google, who, uh, well, Tolliver, you've made a Bishop robot. Tell me a little bit about this. So this robot is uh, basically one of our development kits. We were actually asked to design something we could bring to Maker's Fair, and specifically something that would work at Maker's Fair in a very short amount of time. So I basically couldn't trust cameras, I couldn't trust sensors, and I said, hey, can I put a giant knife on it and do the little bishop knife trick from Aliens? And they said, yeah, do that. So I went ahead and mounted a knife onto this my little happy robot here, brought it out here, set it up, and now I'm running a series of loops here just to show kind of what industrial robots kind of move with their precision. Uh, this specific robot's 0.05 millimeters repeatability. It's a fanic arm, uh, and we're just kind of showing off our little development robot right here for everybody. Uh, one of the things that you told me about right before we started recording was the way that you actually enter in the coordinates for something like this. Now, I would think that you'd have to program each and every single actuator, every servo, as to what position it should be and then what's the next. That's not how it works for industrial robots. How would you actually program these motions? So in this robot's case, and a lot of industrial robots, that you aren't actually learning anything about robots. So what you actually do is each individual point, so for example, we're watching the bishop move right now. It's about to go start over again. And so all I had to do is say program that point up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, and specifically the points at the top and bottom of each arc of those. And the, the actual software inside that robot does all of the path planning and all of the motions of the knife beyond that. So the program I wrote took about 10 minutes to generate that actual motion, and the rest of it was mapped by the software. So like I said, this is not for learning how to do robotics and not how to do kinematics and path planning and anything else. It is not going to teach you any of that. Tolliver, thank you very much for talking to us. Thank you. Uh, I, for one, welcome our robot overlords. So there's a name for that game, but you showed something on the screensavers. Oh, yes, Five Finger Filet. So how much trouble did you get in for them? Oh, did they yell at you? I mean, it was one of many times I got in trouble. The most trouble I ever got in? What? Email. What? The boy band. Oh, that was great. That was great. Greg Drebin. Hated it. So you so you did a parody of a boy band. Oh, that was no parody. It was pretty good, actually. You guys had a dance. You went out to uh, the Golden Gate Park and filmed stuff. Download my love. Download my love. And email. And e email. You even had the gang sign for it. Don't you want to be? My Can you e find that, Greg? E I bet you you can find that. 
And, and, and you got in trouble for that? Yeah, Drebin said it was the worst television he'd ever seen. <laughs> and Leo was in it. It was a whole, the plot of the song was that I had fallen in love with Sassy Angel 42 yeah. in one of the chat rooms. We finally went to go meet. It was a creepy old guy, Leo. Oh, and that's why Drebin, that's why Drebin didn't like it. No. I, I think that this is, some, this is one of many things that, alas, will be... Lost forever? Oh, maybe oh, there I, it is. Maybe is this I, it? Yeah, that's it. Turn up the sound because we don't really want to miss the, the audio. There's Marty. Uh, can you get the audio on it? Here we go. Down low, my love. How can you say this is bad TV? Go full screen on that, baby. Now check this out. There's, these girls were from Sweden. They thought we were a real boy band. They wanted, they wanted our autograph. <laughs> See, we were good. That's Becky Worley. Who else was in this? Just you. It was me. Um, oh, he can't sing. Oh, that, he that, can't that's sing. That's Chris Swanner. Yeah, Chris name? Swanner, sure. Who is, who is the guy with the long hair? And, and he was the Duke of Earl in this, URL. Uh, we, we all had different names. Rich Statter was Ram Ram. <laughs> we don't have to show it. Becky Worley. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Your part's coming up. Here comes. Here comes the, the excitement of it. Yeah. I think there's a little bit more before we get to Leo. Sorry about that. See, no, this no, is this good. is how you pretend. Put yourself good. in the shoes of a television executive right now. This is, but he did not, by the way, this, this aired. It wasn't like he stopped oh, this from airing. Aired. Yeah. He's... There he is. <laughs> There's the creepy old guy. <laughs> That's good. Like almost everything that happened on the old show, I have no memory of that. That was... <laughs> I have no memory of that at all. That was the other show. What show was that? Call for Help. That was from Call for Help? Yeah. That was, well, that was one of my favorite shows, because that's when I did all those Martin Stewart bits. What? Yeah, I used Again, to come in. Again, I have no memory. Martin I did, Stewart? I did all the craft stuff. And you called yourself Martin Stewart? You called me that. <laughs> Why would I call myself? <laughs> I don't want to be Martin Stewart. Is this Dick D. Bartolo time? It is Dick D. Let's get the Gizwiz up. Hey, Dick hey. D. Hey, how are you? I love this man, Dick me D. Bartolo. Too. Martin Sargent what? introduced us. It was love at first sight. Yes. Martin, do you know that you are responsible for me being here today? Uh, yes. <laughs> oh, you do? Yeah, okay. Well, thanks a lot. <laughs> yeah, you, you know wrote, Dick, you wrote me an email. And I, I recognized your name, and I, I showed it to Leo. Did so I recognize have... it? Didn't I say, hey, yeah. wait a minute, I know who that this is. This is Mad's Maddest Writer. I love that guy. Yeah. Well, the funny thing is I had written in just to visit the show, and you called me and said, Leo, we'll never see your email, and is it okay to say you're coming rather than see the show to see if anybody wants to do anything else. You know what's amazing? Just, That's the same story Eddie Dahl is going to tell 10 years from now. <laughs> I just came, uh, you had me read the thing, and now I'm a superstar. Eddie Dahl's <laughs> Cajun cookery. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Dick, it's great to see you. Dick, of course, uh, is doing, uh, he's now independent. He and OMG Chad have taken the Gizwiz independent, and you can find out more at gizwiz.tv. And there's Correct. a Patreon, so it's crowdsourced, and I think it's gonna, it's a, it's great. Uh, and Chad is such a character. Hey, and it looks like you're doing well. You got your the money, the money's rolling in now. Rolling in. Fantastic. Wow. Yeah. No, I gotta I, get I, me one of these. Everybody yeah. should have a Patreon. Do they I need to show? No. <laughs> That's the beauty part. Do I need to do work? Just to a get prototype. <laughs> <laughs> so Dick was uh, recently at the Gourmet Gadgets show. Yeah, well, you know what? The very first thing I did, Leo, was Gourmet Gadgets. And so I found some more Gourmet Gadgets, uh, all Star Wars theme-based. Oh. And, and the reason I, I really enjoyed that is so that I can tell my Star Wars George Lucas story. Is that okay? Yeah. You know yeah. George? No, what happened was Mad Magazine, I did the satire on George's second movie, and it was called The Empire Strikes Back. And but I bet that's right not what you called it. Oh, well, no, it was, there, I, I called it The Empire Strikes Out. 
Okay, <laughs> right, okay. a little bit, a little bit. Uh, Actually, right. a little more accurate to be. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yes, exactly, exactly. <laughs> okay. So, and this was the cover of, of that issue. Oh, look at Yoda. Uh, yeah, Alfred Yoda. E. Newman is Yoda. Yeah, couldn't be better. And then, and then uh, he has it there. And then you can, you can show the splash, Brian. So what happened was, what we is. get a letter from <laughs> Lucas's attorneys. Uh oh, that this is copyright infringement. That we are suing all of you. That you owe us 20% of oh the profits. God. But they didn't know that. that a week earlier, George Lucas sent me, John Ficarra, and Mort Drucker a letter saying we should have special Oscars, should be awarded. The sequel to my sequel was Galactic Madness. So our he published, In other words, George loved this. Loved it. Loved it. So Bill Gaines, who was the publisher back then, took the lawyer's letter, took a magic marker, and wrote, gee, George liked it. Ooh. See the attached letter. Ooh. And <laughs> sent Lucas's letter back. And, of course, we never heard from them again. <laughs> George said, may the farce be with you. I like that. Yes, yes, exactly. Keep up the good it, farce. That is fantastic. Yeah, exactly. Isn't that fun? That's a nice so, thing to have. Oh, it's great. It's great. So, you know, based on the fact that the uh, second Star Wars teaser got 10 million hits in hours, we'll do Star Wars gadget number one, the Darth Vader lightsaber barbecue tongs. <laughs> and Brian, run that video. I'll show the you how it works. The strong in this one. <laughs> Wow. And there's audio on it. Sheath our weapon. <laughs> oh, my. Okay, and... You have to take this the tube off. Press the magic button. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I challenge your steak <laughs> to a duel. Okay. That's pretty neat, isn't it? Wow. I, I, I find your <laughs> lack that's, of steak. That's perfect for her brisket. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the Star Wars barbecue, and that's about oh 40 bucks God. on Amazon. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> and now we have, you can cut to my close-up camera, Brian, we have the Star Wars Pizza cutter. Oh, look at that. It looks just like R2-D2. The R2-D2. Okay. Yeah. So you you can cut back to my other mic because I'm going to bring this up here. And as you cut the pizza. Oh. <laughs> wow. Oh, Lord. <laughs> you see, they did not have this. When you were doing your Where is Technology Today, you they know, did you not You know what's have... sad? That's a $3 pizza cutter, but when you add the Star Wars royalties they have to yes. pay, it's $43. That pizza's going to taste so much better. I thought I liked pizza before. <laughs> yeah, that, that's about 19 bucks on Amazon. Yeah, okay, $18 of that is, goes to James. Yeah, that's, okay. that's, exactly, yeah. that's exactly right, because that's it is value. the authorized, authentic, and oh, paid-for yeah. licensed Star Wars. Oh, yeah, you don't mess with that. Exactly. And our final little Star you can't Wars guy is the timer. And you can cut back to my... The, so this is a little oh, Star man. Wars timer. And it's the R2-D2 timer. And when you want to time it, you twist his head. <laughs> of course. <laughs> and his head slowly turns back. <laughs> and you get the, it's the typical kitchen sound. It just goes it ding? It doesn't, doesn't make a... It doesn't No, It doesn't do anything oh. thrilling, which was kind of disappointing to me. Yeah. Uh, and, and that guy is selling now for uh, 22 bucks on Amazon. And I have one final gadget. Leo, you are a chef. So let me, do you know about the chef's thumb? I No, I might have had one once. <laughs> okay. After a five-finger filet episode. Well, okay, Wait, so what? this is the chef's thumb. What the and hell? And what this is, so Leo, this is so you can go in close to cutting veggies. Oh, Lord. I know. And Well, are you good at, I, I to tell you the truth, I slice vegetables with a hatchet <laughs> because I can be 18 inches away from the blade. It's it's uh it's uh yeah I can you know I can chop pretty quick. You get the trick is not to stick your thumb out. Oh okay. Well, but, you know I saw the, I saw the way uh, Martin slices up things. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> 
He the needs chef. five of these. You, you for, chop right. when you're holding stuff. You put you put your knuckles like that, and there's nothing to, nothing to slice off. Oh! There. But if you're chopping like this, you know you're gonna lose your thumb. Oh! So hey, left lefty, did you hear that? <laughs> That's why we call him Four Finger Dennis. So uh, you put that on your thumb, but it looks like it has a peeler in it, too. Yes, it does. It has a, a slide-on peeler, so you can run that over the veggies. And also, the bottom of it has little tongs on it that will hold the vegetable <laughs> in place. He, he laughs. I mock. You see, what when you're, when you're a gourmet person, this yes. doesn't make it. It's sense. very different. Uh, gourmets have a whole different take on this. Absolutely. Very nice. I mean, I, I would use this to slice a bagel. The slicing bagels is uh, lethal. <laughs> That's true. That's dangerous. Then I yes. think it's one of the number it one is. injuries uh, in hospitals is uh, people who are slicing bagels. Because they yeah. hold the bagel like this and they cut it like that. That's a bad idea. Bad idea. You hold the bagel and you no, slice it. No, you out. put the bagel in the other hand and then yeah. you cut it. <laughs> That's yeah. right. Yeah. Do it with your left hand. That way, if you lose a thumb, no big deal. Yeah, there you go. Dickie D, you're going to follow the uh, new screensavers every Saturday afternoon. If we get this show done uh, about 4 o'clock, it would be then. But, of course, it's after 4 now, so I'm thinking 5 p.m. Yeah, that's good. Pacific, that's 8 p.m. your time. Yeah. The Giz Fizz. And don't forget, gizwiz.tv for the new Gizwiz show. You can subscribe there. You can support Dick with a buck or two per show. He'd much appreciate it. We much appreciate you. Thank you, Dickie D. Good thank to see you, sir. Dick. Thanks, thank you so much. Do you remember much, this Mark. guy, Marty? You remember oh. him? Yeah, you ever you hear know him? Uh, I said, Leo, one day he's going to be doing something other than this. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> <laughs> quite <laughs> prescient of you. <laughs> Thanks, Dickie D. Okay, bye. Maybe, maybe you noticed this sign, by the way, the No Place Left to Turn sign, which was a big part of the screen. That's right. We sold it when they took apart the set on the old show. I'm on there. You are on there. Martin Sargent signed it. Love me, please, I beg of you, Martin well, Sargent. Well, nobody listened. <laughs> uh, everybody's on here. We got uh, Megan, Weird, Patrick, man. Morgan, Kevin Rose, and me. And the guy who bought this in the auction, the auction was for charity, so he, he, he paid his money and it went to a good cause. But he uh, wrote me when we started uh, building the studio here. And he said, would you like that back? And I said, heck yeah. Heck yeah. <laughs> My that's wife part of says, history. you got to get this out of here. <laughs> yeah. Why'd you buy that sign? Who's Woody? Martin Sargent? I don't understand. No place left to turn. Actually, no, I still don't understand what that means. No place left to turn. It's kind of a grim message. I have a real good understanding of what that means. <laughs> Whatever producer created that really had a grim look at the... Uh, Life there. Uh, yeah. Our show coming up. We got lots more, including a nine dollar computer. Nine. I don't believe this. Well, you're gonna see the chip in just Get a out second. Of here. It's two. It's two. But before we do that, let's uh, talk to uh, a little bit about our sponsor, BrainTree Payments. We love BrainTree Payments. It's a great idea, getting better all the time. If you're a mobile app developer and you need to put payments in your app, I just used BrainTree Payments yesterday. What did I buy? I can't remember. It is amazing. It's just a few lines of code. You can take payments of all kinds. I mean, of course, Apple Pay. Uh, you can also take PayPal, but you can, you can take Venmo. You can take Bitcoin using Coinbase. You can take payments of any kind. This is your customers are going to love it. It's seamless. Did you know, this is a true fact, that it's 70% of all uh, uh, ex uh, exchanges where you were in the, in the shopping cart. How, how can I say this? 70% of all shopping cart experience are people leaving. Only 30% go through. Really? So what happens is people see your product, they go through it, they get all set, they're ready to buy, they get to the shopping cart and they abandon it. 70%, this eliminates that. This makes it such a good experience. Your customers are happy. It flows right through. It really is a great solution. That's why Uber that's, uses it. Can you believe that? 70%. I don't want my wife to hear about that. I know this. May, well, no, she no. You she doesn't. Fill up the... She doesn't have to do anything. Actually, it's the <laughs> app. Munchery uses it. They just got a big uh, venture capital infusion. Uber uses it and Lyft uses it. Airbnb uses it and Hotel Tonight uses it. That tells you how great this is. GitHub's been using it since day one. Braintree Payments will take you from your first dollar to your bill, billionth dollar in a simple integration, and I want you to try it right now. And it's easy to do if you go to braintreepayments.com slash NSS. braintreepayments.com slash NSS. It's what they call a full stack payment solution. And to make it a little bit sweeter, your first $50,000 in transactions are fee 
hmm. free. That'll really help you get started. $50,000 in transactions fee free. Mobile developers go to braintreepayments.com slash NSS. It also works on the web. I think I bought a book. I think that's what happened. I bought a book online. It said Braintree Payments. I thought, mm. right on. Uh, we are continuing with the new screensavers. Martin Sargent is here. It's so good to have him. See him again. Talk about the good old days. We're going to take a break, and then we come back. We got another help me and a visit with a $9 computer. Stay right here. Hey, I'm Mark Million. I'm a tech editor at Bloomberg Business. Um, my tip is the best way to keep track of your favorite TV shows. Um, so I use this obscure website, some British website. I don't even know where it came from, but I've been using it for years. It's called, uh, it's pogdesign.co.uk slash cat, whatever that is. Um, so what this allows you to do is you create a profile and then they list all of the TV shows on network TV and on Netflix. And so um, the thing I love about Netflix shows is that they all come at one time and I don't have to remember when they're on, but that doesn't work for Game of Thrones or some of my other favorite shows. You can go on this site and, uh, and, and from this list here, you pick some of your favorite shows. Once you got your list, you can export a calendar to say, you know, put into your Google calendar or, you know, it shows up on your phone. And then that it, it shows you, you know, when your shows are in season, uh, it shows you on your calendar when they show up. Um, now, recently, this app Sunrise, which is owned by Microsoft, they started offering a similar feature. So that's an easier way to do it if you have the Sunrise app. But this Pog Design thing works with every type of calendar app. Um, so I think it's definitely worth checking out. Mark Million, Bloomberg Business Week. He covers global. They, uh, that's kind of cool because you put it in your Google Calendar and then you just, you don't ever go back to that site, but it just reminds you the show is, do you I'll watch, miss a do show you watch TV at all? I do, but I usually watch it um, on DVR. Yeah. So I could, TiVo. Yeah. I'm so pissed off. I was so mad. The Letterman, last show, right? I TiVo'd. Of course I'm going to TiVo it. Sure. It was an hour and two minutes. So I missed the last two minutes. The TiVo went, okay, you want to delete this? I said, no. Nah! Isn't that frustrating? Bet, I haven't watched it yet. I'll bet that happened to me too. Yeah, because it was a little. It went a little long. Seventeen minutes long. Seventeen minutes. Seventeen. So I missed the whole set last. Oh. <laughs> there is a feature you could say record an extra thirty minutes or something, but I just I didn't, I didn't know that. that that would didn't know that wouldn't happen. So yeah, DVR, Daredevil. You, you saw that? That's a great show. Recommend yeah, that. I've, yeah, I've, everyone yeah. says it's that. It's a Netflix that's a original. Show. They've been doing amazing stuff. All right, time for a hit me. Help me! Help me! So we got the flying toasters on there. Help me! Oh, yeah. Yeah. Jeff's on the line from Brantford, Ontario, Canada. Hey, Jeff. Hi, Leo. Nice to see you. So the last guy was just moving in. It looks like you're still building. <laughs> yeah, we're in the middle of renovations here. <laughs> That's awesome. Getting a new kitchen? Yeah. Very nice. Looks a little chilly. <laughs> a little chilly in there. Did they put the windows in yet? Uh, yeah, the furnace isn't working yet. Though. Oh, okay. <laughs> now it, it is. I you know here in the United States it's May already, but I understand you're still in the middle of winter in Brantford. Uh, we're we're close to the Great Lakes and ah. uh, so, yeah. a bit chilly still. Well, what yeah. can we? What can uh, our, our our tech expert Martin Sargent and I do for you? <laughs> uh, okay, well, uh, basically, um, I do uh, a lot of tech. Uh, support for friends and family. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that I have to do very frequently is uh, reinstall Windows or just use the Windows ISO uh, to uh, get to the repair utilities. Yes. So uh, what I would like to be able to do, because right now I have um, basically a separate uh, USB stick for every version of Windows. Me too. Uh, Me too. Vista 7, yeah. so forth. And I have a yeah, lanyard so I can walk around with like a necklace. I look like Mark Spitz with a necklace of, <laughs> of, of operating systems around my neck. Every geek should have that. That's a good thing to do. Yeah. Well, this is there old. It is. There it yeah. is. Yeah. You have it on a lanyard, too. Yep. Yep. Yeah, yep. exactly. Yeah. We used to carry, do um, you remember? We used to have those binders of DVDs. Remember, you'd carry around your, your geek DVDs. It would have boot disks and all that stuff. I used to have a binder that I'd carry around when people needed me to come in. Now we just can put it around our necks. Now I have yeah. a binder full of women. That's another story. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? I'm so sorry, Jeff. What can I do for you? <laughs> uh, well, 
Well, you were mentioning, yeah, the DVDs. You put it on yes. a CD or a USB. It's yeah, easier. But much easier. Yeah. Take it one step further and uh, take all the Windows ISOs and put them on one large capacity USB. Maybe do like a multi boot or a chain load or something like that. Ah, that's interesting. Obviously, if you partitioned it, you could easily do that, right? Each one could have its own partition, and then you'd use a bootloader to choose the partition that you wanted. But you just want to copy the ISOs over. The way it works right now, when you stick that in and you boot, it will boot the ISO or no? Uh, does it right need now to boot? It, it does. It does, because you have one yeah. ISO on there. Well, I did what, like what you did. I copied the, like, the file structure over. Yeah. You can't, right, so I, I extract the files in the ISO exactly. straight to the USB. You can't, you can't actually boot an ISO, unless there's some sort of software on there, auto-run auto software that would boot the ISO. Normally, the way the BIOS works is it looks and sees, is this a bootable disk? And then we'll start it up. And you could, So that's how you would solve that, by the way, is put a bootloader on it, have a partition for each version of Windows. Each partition has a full install thing, in, not just the ISO, but... Are you, you're not unpacking the ISO. You're using software that will make it bootable, I presume. Uh, I am unpacking the ISO just unpacking so that I can... It. Okay. Yeah, well, that's how I get, you know, uh, one version of Windows on each separate USB. Right. But, I mean, that becomes a problem when you're putting it, like, multiple versions on one USB because the similar file names, they start overwriting each other, so... What I would do is partition the, uh, uh, the key, as many partitions as you were going to have versions of Windows, Create in each partition a bootable version of Windows. I use software to do that. I didn't know you could just unpack an ISO and it would all work, but I guess it does. But I use there's software that you can run that says make this a bootable disk. You do that with each individual partition, and then you need a boot manager. Uh, there, there's there's Gag, there's Plop. I, what is it with these names? Uh, there's uh, Hirons has a boot manager. You need a boot manager which you'd put on that as well. That would then be the first thing, you put that on the master boot record, that'd be the first thing that loads, and it would say, okay, I got four different operating systems, which one do you want to launch? Does that make <clears> sense? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure what I would, what I, the issue, the partition's easy, the creating bootable partitions, you know, six bootable partitions on one uh, USB key, I think that's not a hard thing. I think the issue is the boot manager and where are we going to put that boot manager Somebody's saying yummy, Y-U-M-I. That's Josh in our uh, chat room. So I, that's to me, that's what you need is a boot manager that will choose which ISO to boot from. Why? Oh, this looks great. Look at that. This does it. you want. It's at pendrivelinux.com, and it's, uh, it allows you to do a multi-boot USB key, exactly what you're looking for. Now, this is for Linux, but I would. it doesn't really matter what OS you're using as long as you can boot. The yummy bootloader will then choose which partition or which ISO to use. So this I, sounds like you don't even need to make uh, separate ISOs. I mean, separate uh, partitions. Yeah. You'd have the kitchen done by now if you had that. <laughs> <laughs> you need yummy. Why you am I? Um, I would say almost any bootloader could do it. The key is, uh, e oh, here's another one. Easy to boot. Easy to boot. Easy to, the number two uh, boot. That's what I was going to recommend. And uh, X boot for Windows, multi boot for Linux, easy to boot for all platforms. Those are some choices. Tell you what, we'll put those in the show notes for you. Are you an IT, there it is, easy to boot. Are you an IT guy? Uh, yeah, that's my day job. Yeah. Cool, cool. Look at that. Go back to that page, Brian, because that does everything you want. It could do Windows install ISOs. It could do... Uh, all kinds of operating systems, including Linux, Hirons. That looks like the solution. Easy, the number two, and boot. And then you don't have to have separate partitions. You could just have those ISO files. It'll actually boot the ISO. You know, that is what I was going to recommend. I, I see had it. You it had it right there notes. in your show notes. I was just waiting for an opportunity, <laughs> but you guys were... Blah, 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 in between blah, blah. chip bowl tricks... And another one. No, what's shot? <laughs> what's the matter with you? Hey, thank you, Jeff. I appreciate it. Good luck. All good, good luck Thanks, to Leo. the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see him type that in? He typed that I in. I did not. He? Easy to a boot. Ask Molly. I was going on about easy to boot. It's so all great. Last night. Molly is your wife. Is she, did she come? No, she couldn't make it. Oh, all right. She, she sends her regrets. She is a saint to be married to you. Can you? That's a, I'm, no, that's Lisa. a good thing. <laughs> She's a saint, too, I'll tell you right now. All right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, $9 computer, could it possibly be real? We'll find no out way. as the new screensavers continue. You're skeptical. I am. Stay tuned. Need tech help? 
The new screensavers are here with answers. Email your tech questions to newscreensavers at twit.tv. Hey, I'm Jim Lauterbach. I'm a brand strategist for Watch It. I travel a lot. I got a travel tip for you. First off, get a nice little bag to hold all your wires and gear and everything. And when you do, make sure you have in here what I do. Let's see, this holds my headphones. This is my cables. And I want to look really carefully. I have both a regular cable for a standard micro USB. I always carry one of these for audio because, you know, if you get in a car and it doesn't have Bluetooth, sometimes you want to hook your phone up to it. I usually have an Apple connector as well. I don't think I have that anywhere. Oh, headphones, you always need headphones. You always need the earplugs. I always have one or more of these to plug them in. This is to clean my glasses. This is to protect me from lights when I'm sleeping. I bring two of them. Keys to the place that I'm going, uh, eye drops, and uh, what else? Oh yes, the other important thing, bring multiple portable USB flash drives because you never know when you might need more than one. Thank you, Jim Ladder. <laughs> Somebody in the chat room said, Jim's reduced to this. Isn't that sad? <laughs> Tips on the new screensavers. No, Jim, Jim's doing great stuff. He really is, and it's great to have him. And he'll come back, I'm sure, to do more shows with us. Right now, we've got Dave Rouchwork. He is the CEO of Next Thing, right? That's right. Nice to see you, Dave. Welcome. Lovely to see you, Leo. So this is another Kickstarter. It's another Kickstarter. Actually, this grabbed my eye as soon as you launched. $9 computer. Wild. Tell me a little bit about your background. How can you do a nine dollar computer? So a year ago, I brought this as well. Uh, if you guys oh, I remember it. this. Yeah. So this is a here. Let's show this here. This is uh, oh. this is Auto, right? So Auto is an animated GIF camera. It's a hackable <laughs> camera as well. So I'll show you how it works really yeah, briefly. Yeah. Sure. So it has this little uh, menu on the top, and we'll go to the GIF mode. Oh, that's pretty. Look All at right. that. And then we'll pop up this crank, and then you flip this crank out, <laughs> and then you rotate it. And it's making a, a GIF. And it captures frames. 32 frames right there. And then it saves the GIF. You have to rewind it. You to have save. to rewind it, yeah. <laughs> so we had some fun with this. So we, over the last year, we built this. So this is so cool. Was this a fun. Kickstarter as well? This was, yeah, a year ago. So How much are, money did you raise to make this? About $70,000 to make these. And you're shipping the, you've already these shipped These are, are shipping now. So That's people really are awesome. starting to get them. Um, and Auto was 250 bucks, which is a lot of money for a really fun toy. Right. Um, but it's hackable, and that's exciting to people like us. But we wanted to make it a lot cheaper. Yes. And we're like, well, we, you know, if you feel Auto, which you can on the internet, unfortunately. It's, it's heavy. It's heavy. It's made of metal. It's like you, know, a, you really know. It's like solid. a substantial camera. And so we're like, well, we can't make Auto, you know, lighter. And, and <laughs> this, is the, this is the cutest thing I have ever seen. Does this button do anything? So this actually, if you unscrew it, there's a USB port behind oh, it. Oh, that's so how you, you get that attach off. And you can charge it or attach an Arduino. Oh, or neato. Whole story there. We'll go into another time. I but love this. And can you and now, if you didn't get involved in the Kickstarter, it's gone. It's gone. It's over. You're not going to make any more. We're not going to make any more oh, of this. Oh, you're yeah. killing me. Here. Yeah, sorry, man. Oh. So we wanted to make it cheaper. And unfortunately, the most expensive part about this was the computer inside of it. Really? Yeah. You wouldn't think that, would you? You wouldn't, yeah. Because everything is everything's computerized, everything feels like it's really inexpensive. Right. But for a small group of folks to build a product and sell it for $99, right. we couldn't do it. You, is it does it mean because you have to do custom chips and things like that? So the custom PCBs, DLSI. but also like buying in, in large quantities. You can't. You can't do it, right? Yeah. So we sold 500 of those. And you know, when, when you build a product, they say you should multiply your cost of your bomb, your bill of materials, by two and a half or three times. Right. So if you start doing the math, you start to realize, well, if the computer is 30 or $40, your product's almost 300 bucks. Right. right. So we're like, based on those numbers, we needed to lower the cost of the computer. Right. So we set off on this sort of journey, went to China, um, where we had spent some time, and we were like, how do we build a computer that costs less, less than 10 bucks? Because we want to make things like auto and make them cheaper. Now there's a Raspberry Pi, but it's $35. Yep. There are Arduinos and others, but nothing is less than $10. Nothing is less than 10 bucks. That's really inexpensive. It's, and when you say computer, you're not just saying the processor. You want I.O. and everything? Everything, right? So we need all the stuff that makes what it What were computer. the specs you needed? So we wanted about a gigahertz of speed, Okay. right? We wanted 256 to 512 megs of RAM. Oh, that's a lot. Yeah, okay. quite a bit. And the goal here is that can we run a full Linux distribution? Right. Because the fun of all of this is if we can have a really inexpensive computer to build things with, then we want to be able to run real Linux. Right. Not something you run on a router like, you know, open word. That's all great. But if we want to build a product, we want to run like real Python, real C code, things like that. So you need to boot a real operating system. But you also need I.O. on this. You need disk storage. It has disk storage. Yep. So like on, on other sort of de developer boards and products, you have to attach an SD card. Which yeah, that's Raspberry Pi. You put a little Things like that, yeah. Card. And it's, yeah. it's a problem because they're very slow. So we wanted it to be able also to boot very fast. So it felt like, you know, so a real So integrated thing. RAM. You got it. So integrated uh, permanent storage. So we use NAND flash. And then that's where you get chip, which we have right here. 
This is the chip. We're so going to fold. Now, what's what about I/O? Do you have Bluetooth? Do you have Wi-Fi? So this has you... got Wi-Fi, BGN, Bluetooth 4.0, oh, which supports Bluetooth LE. I see USB. You two USB ports, USB 2.0 on the go. Uh, it's got composite video. So out. this is OTG. The small one's OTG. The large one is just regular Standard. USB 2. Standard. Yeah. And that's uh, power, or is it? This one is actually um, composite video, oh, microphone wow. in, and uh, stereo out. Oh, that's cool. So the power comes in through the micro USB? Through the micro USB, okay. yeah. And cool. then it also has built-in battery charging as well. So you can plug in a LiPo, single-cell LiPo pack and build stuff with it and take it outdoors, you know, like auto. So if you look at all the stuff we needed to build to make auto, we put it all into a little board. Wow. So you look can build that. projects. But the fun thing is, and we learned this along the way, is like, oh, man, we've lowered the cost of the computer below $10. It's a computer. That's a product. Well, that's an interesting thing on its own. Yeah. And so, so tell me, what is the what are the chips on here? That so, that must be the storage, right? So this is actually a combination uh, NAND storage, which is four gigabytes. So four gigs have, of four of, gigs of storage, storage, and then five hundred and twelve meg megs of DDR. So it's RAM your NAND and your RAM built into there. And is this the system on a chip? Up that here? is the SOC actually, and it's an entirely new chip called the R8 that we worked on with uh, All Winner, which is a Chinese so, manufacturer. Of interesting. Chips. It's yeah. an ARM chip. I would. It's an ARM chip. Presume. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, what is this? Uh, this must be the radio. That's so. a Realtek uh, Wi-Fi 2-in-1 okay. with Bluetooth as well. Cool. And the thing that we've been working on, right, is we've sort of sourced all these chips that are very inexpensive and bought them in really large quantities, which is why we did the Kickstarter. How many really large? Like, well, so far... Tens of thousands? Yeah, a wow. lot. So right That's now, one way you get the price, as you said. That's one of the only ways. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. And so the other thing going here is that making all of this work in a sort of nice way with, with real Linux takes an enormous amount of work and an enormous community effort. Software work, you mean? Software work, yeah. yeah. So Because you need drivers for all of this. You got it. Yeah. So that's really what the Kickstarter was about, was number one, getting the large quantities, and number two, getting a, getting a huge group of people to help us wow. mainline the kernel. Yeah. So that when you don't have to install all these patched kernels and all these patched things, it just works out of the box. Interesting. You mean you can literally install a generic Linux on here? G gener generic Debian ARM hard float will wow. run on this. That's the plan. That is impressive. It's We're hoping it, it works out because it, it means that we don't have to deal with all the nonsense that we did when we right. built Auto. Right. It just works, which is so rare and, and super awesome if we can pull it off. Does that Debian distro come with the drivers that you need, or do you have to have a separate? We've actually been building the drivers. Yeah. And Are you, you going to get them built in the distro? Can we're going to get them mainlined as well. That's great. Yeah, it's an enormous effort. Um, we've had some really great support already, people reaching out through the campaign, and it's it's been fantastic. So, so that has been a big open source project, obviously. Exactly. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Do you have a GitHub page people can go to? We do. If you go to the Next Thing Company, you can see the GitHub repositories. You can actually get all of the operating system and software that powers auto, Great. which is a big part of this project because we're taking all the work we did on auto and applying it to chip. So you're, that's really cool, too. You're giving back as well because it's open source. We couldn't have done it without the support yeah. of the community to this date. But, that's neat. Um, the other thing here that we did is... Yeah, what is this keyboard? So this keyboard, so this is pocket chip. This is a prototype <laughs> of pocket chip. I want pocket chip. That's it. That is so cute. So it's, got a, it's got a QWERTY keyboard. It's got a QWERTY keyboard. And so we applied the same sort of design uh, reasoning to the from chip to pocket chip, which is can we how can we make the most accessible, you know, computer with right. a display and a keyboard because everyone right. needs to add that to turn chip into a fully functional computer yeah i mean it's not it just you got the board here that's great if you're designing a cam a gif camera of course by the way gif or gif either okay. i say gif the, okay. the inventor says gif i know he's wrong he's it's wrong GIF. he's completely yeah, yeah, wrong yeah, yeah. okay we're in uh, agreement there that's good so yeah so you, you would have to actually add you know a monitor and a keyboard right. and i see you've, you've got these connectors for that kind of so thing. so that's but. actually also gpio as well so you get an ah. enormous amount of gpio interesting now when we show this to people we're like Hey, we built this thing. What do you think? It's a nine dollar computer. Yeah. They say, "Where's the screen?" Yeah. What do I do with <laughs> yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. You know, Waz had the same problem, right? It's like if you don't have a display, you got nothing. It's a big part of it, right? right. And right. so, you know, I mean, not really, because people are building things like cameras and want this, but but for a Kickstarter project. It yeah, makes and, sense. and yeah. the other thing too is when you when you're into these kind of things, working with different developer tools, you, everything you have to do, you have to like find a monitor and keyboard. Even us, like we have all these wires strewn everywhere. Right. And to be real, like we wanted a way to carry a hackable Linux distro in our pocket. So this is this is, <laughs> this is our hysterical. version of the sort of hacker's Game Boy. So there's a there's a fully functional um, By the way, it comes on a lanyard. So <laughs> if you really want to be fashionable, there you, go. you, can wear it you just put this on here like this and then you could just go, hey, I'm sorry, I have to compute right now. Uh, and this has Wi Fi on it, right? So this so, has so actually chip on this one it's not removable, but in the production units when the Kickstarter stuff ships, yeah. chip actually goes in and out of the pocket chip. So Oh so you can actually use it as you an extension. You can put the brains in 
later. Yeah, and so if you look here, <laughs> this is the really fun thing, is you can actually just pop on this terminal. That's a touch screen. It's also a touch screen. So now we have an actual SSH terminal here that we can carry around. Oh, now and that by itself would be great. I could run my Emacs in here. Exactly. And yeah, I'm yeah. set. Oh, that's amazing. So, and it's, it's battery powered and lasts for five hours, and it has all the GPIO broken out at the top. So did you guys design this as well? We designed all of this stuff, yeah. And this is also completely open source. The files for the enclosure, the PCB itself, all the software is completely free and open. Now, how much is this going to cost? This is $49, including the chip. See, Aaron's interested in this, right? I mean, isn't that a pretty amazing thing? Wow, holy cow. It only works because of the community's support, well, because we've had to buy a lot of parts I to love make that. it happen. Now, it looks like you've got little uh, connection ports here. Are these testers? What are these? So this is actually the GPIO breakout because, you know, got it. We've, we've done a lot of projects. If, you know, we're at Burning Man doing some art installation or whatever, we're like, hey, man, I really just need to connect a serial terminal to this thing that I'm working on. Right. And now you have actually breakouts on the top of the pocket chip that you can use <laughs> to hack out in the real world. That is awesome. So you could use this as an oscilloscope or a tester. Or you could use this for pen testing. You could go hook up to things. And I mean, it would work great with Modulo if you needed to burn some firmware onto yeah, it. Like, there yeah, you go. Exactly. Totally portable. Wow. Also to program auto, which we're super excited about. So the 500 folks that have auto. This will save it, but do you think it's going to ever come back, auto? Uh, we'll see. I come mean, on, you got this now? <laughs> you can do it. You can do it, Dave. We'll see. If, if it comes back, I'll come back out, out here to the studio and show it to you. So if people want to uh, contribute, it's not it's not over yet, right? We have about 13 days left. Okay. Yeah. Rush to Kickstarter. What should they search for? Chip? Chip. It's, if you go search by most popular, we're like one of the most popular ones. Whoa! $1.674 million. There's Dave. 31,000 backers. And there's still 13 days to go. This was the greatest. It was like an OK Go video. I loved it. You made the funniest video. It's, it's great oh, to hear. Oh, this is, this is so cool. Look at this. So uh, what, what, are the, what are the levels of uh, uh, buy-in people can do? So on? you can get chip for 9 bucks. Okay, uh, and if, you, then if you can use that. If okay. you can use it on its own, which is really interesting for building projects. <laughs> and uh, you can also get pocket chip and chip for 49 bucks. Um, we've put a lot of energy into trying to find the right backer levels for people. If you've ever backed Kickstarter, you know it's kind of a mess yes. of all the different levels. Yes. We've stopped adding levels. Good. And, and so there's... Lots of options you can buy, and when the campaign is over, we're going to explore making available and all the different combinations that people Looks want. like you get a pretty big team there, or maybe that's just video magic. That's No, we have a pretty large team. There's about nine of us. Um, that's great. But, you know, we did build a computer, so nine people's not too bad. <laughs> it's not bad. <laughs> Dave, this is awesome. Really great, I Leo. really love this. People could find out more about it. Just go to the uh, $9 computer at Kickstarter. or Do you have a, a separate web page? Uh, nextthing.co. Nextthing.co and find out uh, more about CHIP. And it's not too late to contribute. A couple of weeks left. Uh, that is just awesome. I can think. And just, you know what? This is better just than... Wear it. Just yeah. wear it. Uh, it's a wearable, Leo. It's a wearable. It's, uh, you know, who needs a, a giant clock? I can wear this instead. Don't. I don't need a smart... I don't need an Apple Watch. Uh, what do you mean, Apple Watch? I got this. This is a full Debian computer. I'm ready to do anything. Look at that. <laughs> When I ride my Segway, I want to be wearing this. From Done. <laughs> I'll be right there with Thank you. Thank you, Dave. All right, closing words coming up as we wrap up this edition. Episode four. Uh, episode four of the Screen Savers. Stay tuned. Wow, that was, that. did you see that? That's so that cool. That was terrific. Look, I brought my mailbag over with oh, me. Oh, look at you with that mailbox. That. <laughs> That's a federal offense. <laughs> <laughs> Is it really? I can go to jail for life for well, this. Go I ahead, reach in there and see if there's a... I'm a f I always used to be afraid to do this. You should be. On the East Coast, Last time there was a bees, raccoon. Bees yeah. in there. Yeah, there's some mail in here for me and Marty. By the way, we thank you for all uh, your supportive thank emails. Really, really love that. Whoa. Oh, I thought you were thanking me. No, I have nothing to say to you. I know. No, I will thank you, but that'll be at the end of the show. Go ahead and read an email if you got uh, it. Hi, Leo. Hi. I've been on the fence about yes. the Apple Watch because I'm not sure how it will fit into my life. I notice you're not wearing a watch, Marty. <laughs> Kidding me? I also want to know what it's like without the Apple Watch. That is to say, after having and using one for over a month now, what does one day without it feel like? Well, this is a good day to ask, I guess, right? Yeah, I'm not wearing, wearing it, it today. Yeah. Does it become a necessary product after you've experienced it? Does this one day or one week without it change your perception of the device's existence in your life? I think that's life? Scott Bourne, actually, from Washington. Uh, you know, it's funny because... Um, we're, we're starting to see rumors that the Apple Watch may not be selling as well 
as Apple would like. In fact, one analyst said while there was a shortage initially, it was sold out like crazy, a lot of pent-up demand, there have been very few orders subsequently. It doesn't subsequent. surprise me. It doesn't surprise me not either. Not at all. It, it's not something you need. Um, a smart watch is an interesting thing. Uh, anybody wearing the Apple Watch in our studio audience? Zero. Okay. A week away, Leo. A week away for Chris. They just shipped okay. it. Anybody wearing any other smart watch? Yeah, see, I, there's one other Android Wear watch, which I like. I'm wearing my uh, Urbane. It's kind of cool. But I don't think a smart watch is of any value at all. Not at all. In fact, I would say it's a deterrent. Uh, I mean, to well, your, you're certainly not going to get you laid, it's, I think. No. But is that what you mean? Well, no. <laughs> I, this, is, this is not I have sex all, appeal, is it? I have all kinds of things to do that <laughs> quite well, actually. No, uh, it's just... It's, deterrent to what? No, it's, it's just to life. I mean, it's just... It's, it, what do you mean like moving around is harder with a watch on? No, you don't. You just don't need that kind of thing yeah. in your life. You've already got your phone in your pocket. Right. You you need a phone in order to use that thing, right? Well, in fact, that's what Kevin Rose said. He said, "When I so go I out, what, is this so hard to do? It's to, not so to, hard to, to reach into my pocket and grab my phone. Oh, that took a lot out of me. I know. He Kevin said, "When I go out with my wife, well, I don't want to wear a smart arm. watch because that's implying that I might, you know, want to look at my smart watch instead of." Look at my lovely, that looks good. That's, right. a, that's a look, you could do that. Strap that on there. So I guess, the, Scott, the answer to the question is I really don't feel like the Apple Watch is a necessity or any smart watch is a necessity. Uh, not wearing the Apple Watch doesn't send me into cold sweat or shivers. There's a, uh, there's a, uh, a metric that we use sometimes. Is it, is it go back and gettable? And it, like if you leave the ah, house, yes. would you say, oh crap, I left my watch and turn around? I do that for the phone. Yep. I absolutely would not do that for the watch. Lisa, would you? you, you you've been wearing the Apple Watch. She likes her Apple Watch wow. a lot. But it's not like you would turn around and you weren't wearing it yesterday. It didn't, didn't like send you into chills. No. Yeah, so I, I actually am a little skeptical of the whole uh, smart watch thing. I think it's an adjunct, but I don't, I don't, I'm not sold on I it. I can tell the time by looking over at my microwave. Well, you know, we always say... <laughs> can, can an Apple Watch cook Does popcorn? It, no. Your, your, your microwave isn't blinking 12. It actually says what time it is. <laughs> actually, I didn't know how to set it, so I just put a piece of electrician's <laughs> tape over it. It doesn't blink anymore. Here's one from CJ. Ladies and gentlemen of Twit, obviously referring to uh, you, and she says, gentlemen, I'm currently completing version 1.0 of my home recording studio, and I would like to wholeheartedly encourage some segments on home audio or maybe a netcast devoted to home recording. We have a great show with Scott Wilkinson called Home Theater Geeks every Thursday, 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern. And Scott absolutely covers audio, home audio, stereo. But I think recording tech is something a lot of people have asked us to do. And that's what the, the new screensavers exists for because there's stuff that we don't think we could do a weekly show on, but mm -hmm. we would love to have a segment. I would watch that. Yeah. So I've actually, we're, we talked to the producers. You know, Bob Weir of The Grateful Dead has a great studio down the road in Marin where he streams live concerts. Are you guys friendly? Me and Bobby, you know, we had a little falling out. Yeah. I said no band should have two drummers, uh -huh. and he didn't. He didn't like that. But no, I'm hoping. I'm hoping that uh, we can we can work out something and show some of the recording tech that's out there because it's really cool. I don't know if we want to do a whole show. There are good shows about it, but uh, I think that's something we might uh, want to do down the road. Here, I'll give you one. Oh. We, this is share and share alike here. Could you guys make the new screensavers wallpapers for iPhone and Mac, please? It would be awesome. <laughs> oh. Please. Did we, now, uh, we have a Wikipedia uh, wiki page. We have our little uh, wiki.twit.tv. If you go to wiki.twit.tv slash wiki slash desktops with a capital D, there are the screen, the new screensavers wallpapers, but there's lots of other Twit wallpapers look at there. Look those. There's quite a few. Uh, look at that. Doesn't that look nice? Is that what you've been using, Brian Renette, all this time and I didn't notice it? Uh, after today, I am. <laughs> Wiki.twit.tv no. slash wiki slash desktops. Look how nice that looks. Were, the, were the, a lot of those all uh, uh, viewers submitted? Uh, many of those were. This, those I are all think, pretty cool. uh, Anthony Nielsen uh -huh. in our uh, production department did that. Did Anthony do the graphics? Yes. Yeah, did a great job. I really love those graphics. And uh -huh. uh, if, so if you want to subpoena him, that's Anthony Nielsen, <laughs> i.e., okay? Uh, when did, oh, I love this. Another one for Anthony. Why did you choose flying toasters ah. in the corner of the screen when you change between segments? You see him right there. Yeah, he, he's got to be a, a youngster. I don't know he if Anthony remembers, remembers flying that. toasters. You remember that, Yeah, right? back in the days of about, oh, well, you know, win 3.1, that was the screensaver. 
that would always It, it was come great. On. Yeah, it was fun. Oh, these little flying toasters. <laughs> they would go like this I, I and they'd fly across the screen. I was playing on triangulation the other day. What was I showing? I was showing, oh, Alice, the game, uh, the Alice chess game, because we were interviewing the guy who was the product mm -hmm. manager for that at Apple. And somebody has made an emulator online, I can't show it, but maybe Brian can, can find it, that boots up into the Macintosh. And if you don't, it, literally on your computer screen using the browser, and if you don't do something for a while, little flying toasters come across. So you can recreate the flying toaster. Here, we'll, we'll show it for you. Um, hey, we're out of time. Marty? It was so much fun. So Thank you very much you. for having me Do you want to come back and do more? I, if they'll have me. Will you have him? Will you You're have like, him? All right. That was a stupid a question. A standing yeah, ovation I, for Martin Sargent. I, <laughs> uh, I had a ball. Thank you. It was I'll really great to have yeah. you. Next week, it's uh, Mike Elgin. We're going to do Google I.O. I hope you'll tune in each and every week. We do it live. If you see it live, you'll see a little bit more of the behind the scenes than you would normally see on the finished, I hate to use the word polished, <laughs> version of the show that we offer for download. That is about 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, 2200 UTC, Saturday afternoons. Uh, you're also welcome. We want to have you in the studio. And we had a limit on how many people could be in the studio. We were putting an artificial limit on it because we were afraid, frankly, that we wouldn't be able to get around the studio. That has not been a problem. <laughs> so, so as many people as we could fit in here, we're going to fit in here. Just email tickets at twit.tv. We love having a live studio audience as we do this show. And maybe you'll get picked, uh, as Ed, uh, is it Eddie? Eddie yeah. As Eddie was, to be the uh, next screensavers show, we need a title, opener person <laughs> for the show. Your career could begin right here. Uh, if you can't watch on uh, live, you can watch on demand after the fact. We have it all available, twit.tv slash NSS or wherever you get your favorite internet shows. I think that's all I have to say. A reminder, we'll do Google I.O. Live coverage of the keynote begins Thursday morning, 9.30 Pacific, 12.30 Eastern Time. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Martin Sargent. Thank, Thank you to you. all our guests. We'll Thank see you, you next all. time on the new Screensavers. Bye-bye. <laughs>